Grade Sevens, it's your Natural Sciences lesson. I'm Helen, and today the focus of our lesson is energy transfers in biological systems. All right, you remember that we're talking about the law of conservation of energy. And remember, that means that in a particular system, the energy stays constant. We're simply going to transfer the energy from object to object or from store to store, from potential energy store to kinetic energy store, even within one of the objects in the system. But the idea of conservation of energy and the law that describes it is that the total energy in the system must remain the same. So if one store loses energy, other stores must gain the energy so that we keep the energy constant within the system. But remember that sometimes we can lose energy. It's not destroyed, it's just lost, possibly and usually in the form of heat energy. And we're going to see that that happens in biological systems as well. So we know that a system is made up of different parts that work together. And a biological system, and I suppose here, we could use the words living system, is based on transfers of energy between organisms. I want to even add here within organisms and between organisms and the environment. And you know that you've learned about these energy transfers. You may not have called them energy transfers when you learned about them, but you are familiar with the concept because you learned about energy transfers when you learned about food chains. So let's remind ourselves, do you remember what a food chain is? Because a food chain is an example of a biological system. Now, just by telling you that, that a food chain is an example of a biological system, you must expect that within the food chain, you are going to see energy transfers happening. All right, let's look at our food chain and let's try and identify those transfers of energy that are existing within this living system. Well, here we have uh, an ocean food chain or a food chain that appears in a marine system. We start our food chain with organisms called plankton. These little organisms are very often unicellular and they float the surface of the ocean and we can see they have chloroplasts or little green structures inside them, which means that plankton, these particular kinds of plankton, these floating organisms, are going to capture the sun's energy and they're going to transfer that solar or sun radiated energy into chemical energy in the forms of carbohydrates that they make to keep themselves alive. And within each of these little plankton organisms, we're going to see energy transfers happening because some of these little plankton can move. Some of them just float with the currents in the water, but they all have to break down that chemical energy to allow them to reproduce, for example, and do all of their other activities, living activities, or activities associated with living processes in their little bodies. But as they are floating along, we find a certain kind of crustacean called krill. And these are tiny, tiny little shrimp-like organisms. And we're going to see that they take the chemical energy, the potential energy from the plankton that they eat, and they're going to transfer it into their bodies. 
we're then going to see that those, and I, I'm just calling them little fish, let's call them little silver fish. I don't know what their names are, but they are going to eat the krill. And the energy that was present in the krill is going to be transferred to the little silver fish. But the little silver fish have a sad ending because here we have some seals. And the seal is going to eat the silver fish. And we're going to see that the seals are going to benefit from yet another energy transfer. But the seals are not that lucky because they are going to transfer their energy, whether they like it or not, to this big orca. You might know of an orca as a killer whale. And the killer whale is what we call the apex predator in this particular food chain. And it's going to get the energy transferred from the seal into its body. So we see that their energy transfers within the system from object to object. But there are also energy transfers within the objects in the system. And there is a form of wasted energy. Can you spot it? Well, each of these organisms is going to generate heat. And that heat is going to be lost or dissipated into the environment. So the amount of energy that we started off with is far greater than the amount of energy that we end up with. Not because that energy has been destroyed, but along the way, some of the energy has been lost to the environment in the form of heat energy. So let's look at now what we call a terrestrial or a land food chain, a food chain that you might be familiar with living here in South Africa. And we're going to talk about the energy transfers in this particular system. So we could be looking out over grassland or savanna, maybe in the Kruger National Park. How does the energy enter the system? Remember, the system the ecosystem or the situation that we see here of this beautiful grassland, it can't create the energy. The energy must come from somewhere and be transferred into the system. And here we see the sun. Okay. And the sunlight is the original source of energy. We call sunlight possibly solar energy. Or another name that we will learn about is radiant energy. We call it radiant energy because the energy is coming to us on waves of light. So how does the energy enter this system? And it's going to come from the sun in various different forms. We could name that energy solar energy or radiant energy. How is that energy captured and stored in the system? Well, it's going to be all the green organisms, our trees, the grass. Remember in the ocean or marine food chain, it was those little plankton that captured the sun's energy when they photosynthesized. How is the energy captured? It's captured by the process of photosynthesis, which is simply the word for green organisms making food. And that the food that they make is in the form of carbohydrates. So it is stored as chemical potential energy. That energy can be used by the plant itself to make little flowers, to grow taller, 
all of those metabolic or life processes are going to use that store of chemical energy within that object. But it could also be transferred somewhere else. And how would that energy that is locked up in the leaves of our tree, our acacia tree here in the savannah, how could that energy be transferred to a different object in our system? Well, let's have a look. The energy is captured by the trees and grass and it's used, it's captured by photosynthesis or the food making process and it's used within the system for things like growth, it's making flowers, so for reproduction, all of those processes are going to cause this energy to be transferred within the tree and the grass. But it can also bring about energy transfer from one object with an energy store to another object, which is our giraffe. So let's talk about this energy transfer from tree to giraffe. We know that the giraffe is going to eat the leaves from the tree. What we're going to see here is a transfer of chemical potential energy that is present in the leaves or the food of the animal and it's going to be transferred to the giraffe. And the giraffe is going to store some of that chemical energy and it's going to use some of the chemical energy. And how is it going to use the energy? Well, it has to walk. It also has to grow. It has to reproduce. All of those living processes are going to be how it uses the energy but some of it will be stored for when it's not busy eating the leaves. Here's our last energy transfer. Suddenly we see a predator in our lovely peaceful scene and this energy transfer is going to be the lion eating up the giraffe. So we're going to see the energy moving from the giraffe to the lion. The energy moved from the sun to the plant. It moved within, it was transferred within the plant. It was transferred from the plant to the giraffe. It was transferred within the giraffe. And now if the giraffe gets eaten by the lion, the energy is going to be transferred to the lion and that energy will be used to allow the lion to move, to undergo its other life processes like reproduction as well. But we are also going to see that at each stage, we're going to see that these organisms are going to lose heat energy to the environment. So our next energy transfer is giraffe to lion as well as giraffe within giraffe as well as giraffe losing the heat energy as heat. So we talk about this idea of dissipated or lost energy and that is what we're referring to as the heat energy. So if we add it up, the total amount of energy coming into the system the energy moving on from plant to giraffe, and we also must add in the heat energy that is lost, the energy moving from giraffe to lion, as well as the energy that is lost, the energy that the lion uses and the energy that is lost, we will find that our system 
the in, within our system, the amount of energy is conserved. We have the law of conservation of energy in biological systems as well. And that's it for today. Look out for biological systems around you and look at your energy transfers. And I'll see you again next time with another lesson. Bye. Thank you.